decades before Panda Express, P.F. Chang or Deng Taifeng became a nationally recognized brand, Ruby Foods was probably the most famous Chinese restaurant in America. The first Ruby Foods opened in 1929 in Boston, and the last closed in 2015. The only thing remaining today is its name in the form of a hotel in Montreal, Canada. But wow, it's still almost a 100-year run. In today's episode, I want to talk through the food served at Ruby Foods across the world over the years, how they were designed to cater to the customers, and how they changed. Hi, my name is Christy, and this is the American Chinese Food Show. How did it all get started? Ruby Fu and his brother George opened first Ruby Fu in modest quarters at 4 Hudson Street in Boston's Chinatown. The establishment, called the Den, originally served quick lunches to Chinese workers in the area at a small cost. The restaurant was forced to expand again and again after Caucasian Americans discovered the business. The restaurant would be renamed to Ruby Foods after 1930s when Ruby remarried to Thomas Fu after her first husband died. We don't have the menu of the original then serving quick lunches, but we have two menus from the late 1930s and 1940s in Boston. We know the newer one is after 1941 because of the Massachusetts old age tax listed on the menu. It was a 5% state tax on meals that cost over $1 to help fund the Old Age Assistance Fund, a state program similar to Social Security that existed from 1941 to 1955. It's interesting to compare the two menus. Recommendation went from Chinese spaghetti to Chinese ravioli soup. In the suggestion section, spare ribs, which is Ruby Fu's signature dish for decades, replaced Chinese roast pork as the first item. A bunch of desserts like kumquat, golden limes, lychee nuts, preserved ginger were dropped. It's a pretty standard earlier American Chinese menu. 16 chop soy dishes and 16 chow mein, some western vegetables items. A few things stood up for me. There are quite a lot of chicken soups offered. This could be related to the large Jewish clientele. Chicken wonton is even called crab plaque here. Lobster sauce is a pretty Boston specific offering, which I will get into in a future episode when I talk about regional American Chinese food. Chicago chop suey and Chicago chow mein. I'm not able to verify this, but it seems like Chicago style uses a darker sauce um, and it looks darker. Another one is Ruby Fu's special Gui Fa Chao Mein. Gui Fa Gui Fa means the flower of Samanthus. How is it special? Well, I found half of a newspaper article describing it. It has chicken, pea pots, bok choy, chicken mushrooms, water chestnuts, and bamboo shoots. The pea pots are very tender. Bok choy was explained as a Chinese variety of celery. The water chestnuts were imported fresh from Guangxi province. The chow mein is served with crisp noodles. A fellow Bostonian, Florence Pike, made a proposition in 1938 to Ruby Fu to open a similar restaurant in New York on a partnership basis, using the same Cantonese recipes. And it's true, this 1938 New York menu is basically the same as the earlier Boston one, except the prices are a little bit higher, and there's an extra sandwich section that serves barbecue pork, sliced chicken, and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. It has a pretty long cocktail and wine list for an 85 cent lunch set. You get chicken soup with noodles, chicken pork, egg roll, an entree, rice, tea, and dessert. Ruby Foods also had a location at the Paris Fair in the 1939 New York World Fair, and we have the menu here. There is another new section for American dishes, whole broiled Maine lobster, special lamb chops, special sirloin steak, half broiled chicken, all with French fried potatoes. The liquor list became even longer, featuring Ruby Foods special zombie. What is a zombie? It's a tiki cocktail made of fruit juices, liquors, and various rums. First created by Don Beach of the original tiki bar. The zombie continued to be a special at Ruby Foods location at Providence, Rhode Island, which was the Beach Combers, a national tiki bar chain previously. We see a bigger sandwiches section in Providence, but the rest looks pretty similar to the other locations. 
The Miami Beach location from 1939 only lasted for a few years. The selling point of the location was mingling with stage and screen celebrities, professional and businessmen and women. We see the zombie cocktail again. There are special menus for bridge and margin parties, a pretty location specific offering, I'd say. Another outlier here is grilled red snapper in the American dishes section. It probably has the biggest wine list. Three Chinese wines, brandy, mga pei, rose brandy, mui gui lo, and a white rice wine. The wartime opening of the Washington DC Ruby Foods location in 1942 made a big splash in the local entertainment world. More like a supper club than a restaurant, dining was on the first floor, dancing and entertainment on the second. One year after the opening, the second floor was completely remodeled as a Tahitian room featuring Hawaiian dances and jungle greenery. But the menu served basically the same things, maybe with the exception of a special call out to milk fed and fresh killed broiled chicken in the American dish section. The Montreal Ruby Foods opened in 1945 in a former dairy bar. The restaurant rapidly gained popularity like in most of the other locations. The menu offered a combination of Chinese, American and French dishes. It's important to point out that the Montreal location was opened by a Jewish immigrant from Poland. In this 1950s menu, the Chinese dishes were very different from what you find in the other locations. Dishes you never saw before Ruby Foods made it to the Montreal location, like lo mein, ginger chicken, chicken liver, and fish. You can also get French onion soup, Welsh rabbit, scallops, Newburgh, and French pastries. A newer Montreal Ruby Foods menu from the 1980s had mostly Western dishes in the table d'hôte. The number one meal at 9.50 as per person has egg roll, barbecue chicken wings, or chicken noodle soup, beef chow mein, and mugu gai pan, chicken fried rice or steamed rice, then a choice of desserts and beverages. There's an overwhelming amount of spare ribs in the Chinese entree section. Dry garlic spare ribs, sweet and sour spare ribs, hot barbecued pork, barbecued baby long ribs, spare ribs black bean sauce, and spare ribs in poopoo -poo platter. But it's kind of nice to see the original Boston spare ribs dishes were still available after 50 years later. There was also Ruby Foods in London, but not much can be found other than one Yelp review and a short blurb in a newspaper in 2003. Ruby Foods Chinese is the delivery arm of the Mao Thai restaurants. We know they serve Tianjin steamed turbot. The final Ruby Foods was back in Manhattan. It was a two-story extravagance of Buddhas and Mahjong tiles called Ruby Foods Dim Sum and Sushi Palace, designed to appeal to families and partygoers alike. Almost half of the menu was Japanese dishes, from sushi, sashimi, maki rolls to hand rolls. Main plates were a mix of Thai, Malaysian, Singaporean food, were there any dishes from the original Ruby Foods? Not really. There are two back ribs dishes under the dim sum section. One is with tamarind, the other spicy black bean sauce. Both did not exist before. That's it. We went through a lot of menus in this episode. I hope you find them as cool as I do. Uh, I have two more episodes coming up for Ruby Foods. You can't really cover this badass lady with just 10 minutes. If you like our content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon.